Hello ladies and gentlemen, once again this is Jeremy Smith. Recently I got a chance to test out one of Sony's new camera models uh, called the ZV-1. And this is a camera that upon first inspection, I mean I thought it was just kind of more of the same. It looks very much like an RX100 series camera. Uh, at least except for that nice tilt-out screen that we finally got. Um, but as I looked at it in more detail, I realized that this camera is actually quite a bit different. Uh, they basically nixed a lot of the standard RX100 features in favor of more video centric features. So they got rid of the pop-up flash and they got rid of the pop-up EVF. And in their place we now have a hot shoe and we have a built-in microphone that's much higher quality than what we saw in previous like uh, cameras in this range. Now the other area that we know this camera is a bit different is they even changed up the naming scheme. This camera doesn't have CyberShot nor the letters DSC in its name. So they consider this to be something entirely different. Going back to that flip out screen, one thing I will mention that's unfortunately a, a downside is that despite it being a touch screen, it's still the same type of uh, touch screen that we see on Sony cameras. So you can tap to focus, but unfortunately you can't really operate any of the menus. Now, this is something that I don't really mind on the A7 series cameras or even the A6000 series cameras since those cameras have plenty of physical buttons, but on a much smaller, more compact body like this, you really need uh, the additional controls, uh, especially if you're going to use this camera the way that they intend it to be used, where the screen's going to be facing you and you're going to be looking at the front of the camera. It would have been much easier to activate all the settings with a touchscreen. Something else about this camera is that uh, it still uses a 24 to 70 equivalent focal length, uh, compared to like uh, some of the other RX100 series cameras, it's, it's very, very similar. Although the exact focal length of the lens is a bit different, but the equivalent comes out to be about a 24 to 70. Now, when using some of this camera's features especially, I really wish that this camera's lens was a little bit wider. Um, I was really, you know, it would be cool if it had like a 20 to, uh, say a 20 to 50, or maybe an 18 to 50, or something along those lines, but it still got the job done pretty nicely. Now another thing that's cool is that this camera does not have any type of record time limit. So basically uh, I was able to film continuously whenever I was doing 1080p quality. I recorded up to about an hour and uh, it still kept on going. So no overheating issues or anything of that nature. So this seems to be a very, very good design. The sort of thicker body on this camera seems to be paying off because I didn't really run into any type of overheating issues or anything like that. In 4K, at least with the thermal protection turned on, you're limited to about five minutes at a time. However, even then, I was able to record many, many five minute 4K clips without any type of overheating issues. I just mentioned that I wish that the lens were a bit wider, um, especially when using certain features of the camera. Now, which features am I talking about? Well, stick around and we're going to go into that in more detail. Taking a closer look at the Sony ZV-1, if you guys have ever used one of Sony's RX100 series cameras, this one looks very, very similar. A few main physical differences, of course. Number one is the fact that we do not have a mode dial on this camera. It took me a little while to get used to this, but uh, after using the camera a bit, I really actually enjoy this. It kind of makes things a little bit more streamlined. We basically just press our mode button here, and then we get our mode dial on screen. And as we rotate this dial, we kind of go between all of our modes. Now we do have a fair bit of still scene modes and so forth on this camera too. So you guys can see pretty standard to Sony cameras. This is pretty much just like any of their other models. But most of you guys didn't come here to see that. I suspect most of you came to see how this camera does with the video. And of course, this camera is definitely purpose made for vlogging. Um, if we go over to our video mode here, we can of course go in and change our exposure mode within video, just like that. This camera of course has many features that are designed specifically for video. We do have a new microphone design up here, sort of like an array type microphone here, and it actually has very good audio quality. I was very pleased with it. I was doing some filming on a windy day and uh, I ended up taking advantage of 
Sony's dead cat that they include in the box, our little furry windscreen here. So you can basically take off the cover on our hot shoe and that allows us to go ahead and slide in this dead cat. There's some rigid material here and it kind of keeps this microphone nice and flush with the top of the camera. So we get some nice wind protection out of things. So no more do we have to go in and sort of like fashion our own little furry windscreen. We can basically have this one included in the box. Okay, so I'll have to go ahead and take this off. Comes off like that. Of course, the big thing that a lot of people have been waiting on is this flip out screen. So this is something we hadn't seen on a lot of Sony cameras. It's very, very nice to finally see this feature. The camera does really, really well with its ability to uh, sort of like track. So you guys will notice that it actually tracks my eyes very well in real time. I'll get that off myself so I don't feel so self-conscious. <laughs> um, works very, very well. Now, if you want to put a better quality microphone on and use it instead, you do have this hot shoe. This is Sony's multi-interface shoe, so they actually do make microphones that are designed specifically to go there. So you could plug that microphone in and it will communicate through the shoe. You don't have to plug in any additional wires or anything like that, which is really awesome. If, however, you don't have one of those Sony mics, which unfortunately I don't, uh, you can actually plug in any type of microphone, essentially. Okay, so we can put, this is a Rode uh, VideoMic Micro. I always go for that on this side, but it's actually on this one. But you guys will notice that we do have our audio connector right on this side. So yeah, so you can plug in your microphone there. And a microphone like this ends up working pretty well. You know, it ends up making for a nice compact package. And uh, I'm going to kind of let you guys hear some sound from this microphone too in comparison to the built-in mic. Uh, write me in the comments and let me know if you can tell a huge difference. There's certainly a bit of a difference, but um, I was actually still very pleased with the sound of the built-in audio. I'm recording with the built-in sound, uh, the audio levels. Are it's like 26 now, and I'm just giving it a nice little going along in a nice little walking pace. I'm not a vlogger, but I'm going to try my best for you guys. There's a little bit of wind. I'm using the internal microphone without the dead cat. Let's see what happens if I switch to the internal microphone with the dead cat. Okay, exact same thing, still in 60p. Right now I've gone ahead and put the dead cat on. As I kind of get closer to the river down here, uh, you guys will actually notice that there may be a bit more wind noise. So hopefully the dead cat will sort of help out with that. Um, I guess the only downside to having the screen off to the side like this is that I really do want to look over to the right at myself and you guys can tell that I'm not looking at the lens. Whereas if you have that screen directly behind the lens that flips up, you are kind of uh, more likely to appear as to be looking at the lens. But as long as I can focus on the lens and not look at myself on the screen, it seems to work pretty well. Okay, so now I've got the Rode. Um, I said video mic go earlier, I think. This is actually a Rode video mic micro. Uh, I have it on now. I had to lower the audio level just a little bit. It's a bit more sensitive. So we still have some wind kind of off again, on again. No dead cat right now. I'm going to film another clip with my iPhone 11 so you guys can see what's actually happening. So yeah, this is how we are filming this. So I'm filming me filming me filming right now, which is really, really weird. Okay, anyways, so we're walking along, and we'll see how the sound is. I think that actually the sound from this setup, obviously it's going to be a bit better, but the internal microphone is not terrible either. I mean, they both seem to do fairly well. So here we go again. Um, now doing the exact same thing. We've got the dead cat now mounted onto the Rode Video Mic Micro, and uh, <laughs> this microphone. I'll let you guys see what this looks like. 
it's a very large sort of setup but you guys can see that it uh, it still works it still works there but um, anyways that will help fight some of the wind noise but uh, yeah seems to work pretty well even with this it's uh, nice and balanced okay so we'll go ahead and take this guy off as far as our other connections on the camera we do have everything else pretty standard here we have our micro uh, USB connector and then our micro HDMI so nothing terribly special if we look at this camera also in the uh, function menu we'll notice that we have pretty much our familiar cast of characters on the Sony function menu of course this can be customized but uh, we have a few new additions here one of the new additions is this soft skin effect this is basically some computational photography type stuff going on very similar to what you'd have on a smartphone these days so if you go in here and turn this on it basically does some selective blur to skin you can set this to different levels low medium or high um, I'll let you guys look at it and tell me what you think um, I don't know I think it looks a bit heavy-handed I left it off all the time it is interesting to note though that this does still work in 4k so this camera's obviously got some pretty decent processing going on because it can handle those new features even whenever you're doing something like the 4k filming we also have another new option in here too there is a steady shot option the thing that's a bit different is there's a few modes to this so of course you can have it turned off you can turn it on to standard but there's also a new active setting so if we go to active you'll notice that it actually crops in a bit further because it's basically using optical zoom uh, sorry optical stabilization in combination with digital stabilization so it's uh, almost kind of gimbal like the only downside is you lose some focal length here so you don't get that wide view anymore um, again I'll let you guys kind of see how this does I, I shot a little bit with this to kind of show you and uh, write me in the comments below and let me know what you guys think about that as well okay so right now uh, we are testing we've got the steady shot completely turned off we are filming in uh, 1080p at 60 frames a second we're gonna walk along this path nice and easy in case anyone is wondering I'm using the built-in microphone with the dead cat right now it's still very windy today all right we're gonna call this the end I'm gonna turn on the next steady shot mode okay so same exact settings again we've turned on the next steady shot mode this is basically the standard steady shot mode so we're just using optical stabilization right now uh, so I'm getting a nice wide angle field of view and um, guys my arms are long <laughs> by the way in case you ever wondered I'm about six foot one but my uh, arms man is about it's actually about uh, an inch longer so I have sort of frequently long arms but you guys will notice that even with my long arms in a moment when we go to the next mode the crop factor is going to kind of suck so let's see okay so now we've gone from no steady shot to standing uh, steady shot standard now we are in steady shot active so we've got the optical stabilization going on with the sort of digital stabilization so you guys will no doubt notice that I am a little bit closer than I was before not quite as wide of a field of view so yeah even with my very long arms we are losing a little bit of our uh, I'm losing a little bit of my head here because well my arms aren't that long so we've cropped in quite a ways now but the stabilization seems to be very very good in this mode the thing that I like about Sony cameras is that there is of course a lot of customization but there's also a lot of continuity in Sony's lineup uh, so if we look at this camera of course it can do HD uh, XAVCS HD it can do that up to 120 frames a second if you want to do slow motion or something like that I'm usually very very uh, comfortable with 24 frames a second I just seem to really like that I did do all the vlogging with this camera mostly in the 60 frame a second option just because I just wanted to get a little bit smoother look and um, I've actually kind of found that 4k is overkill for vlogging but anyways I shot a bit of 4k footage also 
you have a few different options here. If you, of course, you want to go to 4K, you can go over that way. And you can see that in 4K, we can do up to 30 frames a second. So no 60p here, unfortunately. So that's how all that works out. If we look at the customization, uh, this camera, you guys will, I mean, if you're a Sony user right now and you've used the A9 Mark II or the A7R4, this is basically that newer type of menu interface. So some things that are different about this interface is that if you go into your custom key settings, you can basically get this nice little graphic of where all these buttons are on the camera. So it's a bit easier to customize. Another difference is if you go into the function menu set to customize that function menu, I'll show you guys a moment ago, you can have different options for the stills mode and for the video mode. So you can have things repopulate depending on whether or not you're shooting stills or video, which is extremely, extremely useful. So that's a nice thing as well. We also have our my menu setting, which is something very nice. So if you've got settings that you like to uh, use frequently, you can go in here and you can save them to the my menu. Also notice guys that we have the ability whenever we go and change our modes, we have the ability to also do the memory recall function. So you can program entire groups of settings. So sometimes I like to set this up for like slow motion uh, and basically be able to go to that mode to get to uh, doing slow motion video and then go back to other things. So there's a lot of customization in this camera, just like Sony's higher end cameras. It's cool to me that you can pick up a $4,500 Sony camera or $3,500 Sony camera and then you can pick up this $800, $800 point and shoot camera and you have the same basic menu customization and uh, the same basic uh, features, which I think is just an awesome thing about Sony. Uh, you guys will notice too, we have our ND filter here that we can use. So you can get that wide open aperture, even if you are filming on a very bright day. And speaking of wide open aperture, I'll show you guys another little trick this cam has up its sleeve. There's a button up here on top and of course you can customize this button to do something different, but by default, it does this sort of like um, depth of field control. So basically you can press the button here and you can prioritize getting the background out of focus or you can prioritize getting the background more in focus. So if you're the type of person when, uh, you know, if I say aperture and you're like, what? <laughs> um, basically, you don't have to know how to manually adjust your lens opening to be able to blur the background. You can literally press this button and you can select whether or not you want a blurred background or whether or not you want a background that is uh, more in focus. So it's very, very nice how all that works out. So yeah, there's pretty, it's pretty cool how everything is set up here. Another option that I thought was pretty neat is this option called product showcase. So you can go in here and if you are filming something, uh, say for example, you're going to like unbox something or you're showing a product and the camera is focused on your face and then you want to hold something in front of the camera. You know, you, we always have to hold something up and try to get the camera's attention and hope it focuses on the objects we hold up. Basically, if you go in and turn on this product showcase feature, this simplifies that whole process. So when this is on, the camera will focus on you if you were not holding up anything, but as soon as something gets closer to the camera lens, it will automatically focus on that object. So yeah, it totally makes the whole unboxing thing much, much easier. So very, very nice feature as far as that goes. Anyways, guys, that's kind of the high points on this one. Um, you guys may have noticed that I didn't really put any sample images in the description below or anything this go around. Mostly just because this is a camera that most of you guys are going to be uh, probably doing video with. If you guys do have questions about the still image quality, certainly let me know and we could look at that too. Um, but yeah, if you've used any of Sony's RX100 series cameras, basically from like the 5 all the way up to the 8 or this camera, yeah, they all basically have the same excellent image quality. So anyways, be sure though, if you have questions, write me in the comments about anything else you'd like to see on this camera. Don't forget to follow me on social media. I am known as Photog J the Great. Um, I might be wearing a face mask to avoid the plague, but uh, I am still very, very great even during a pandemic. So be sure to follow me on social media. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Until next time, this is Jeremy Smith, signing off.
So you can like walk wow. around. Yeah. You can see how it's got the eye detection right now. Yeah. Video. Yeah. So like we can move around. It's gonna keep track of me. Wow. It knows that your face is over there, but it knows to look at my eyes because I'm a little closer right now. So it's uh, sweet. I'm gonna have to incredible. come holler at you. Yeah. Let me get this ride in. All right then. See now you're gonna probably end up in this video. There you go. There you go. There you go. I like it. Hey, send me the link. All righty then. Send me the link. All right. Take care.